Hey everybody, today I'd like to go over some of the basics of Linux file permissions. So we're going to start out by checking out how we can see the different permissions of a file. If we do our typical ls, all we're going to see is the names of the different directories and files in the current directory. But if we do ls-l, the l stands for long format, we're going to go ahead and see all sorts of different information about the file. So this field here all the way on the left is going to be the different permissions on the file. The first column here is either going to be a D or a dash. Now, if there's a D here, it means that this item all the way on the right is a directory. And if there's just a dash, it means that this item here on the right is a file. Now, the next thing we need to learn is the different types of permissions in Linux. Now, the main ones are read, write, and execute. R represents read, W represents write, and X represents execute. Now, read and write, permissions are pretty self-explanatory. If you have read privilege and you're able to open the file and view the contents. If you have write permission, you're able to write to the file and change the contents. And if you have execute permission, you are able to execute the file, such as some sort of script. Now, execute works differently on directories. So if a directory has execute privileges, then you can go ahead and open the directory and view what's inside. But if you don't have execute privilege, you're not able to open the directory. All right, now let's break down this field here on the left, which is going to be the permissions field for the given file. Now, you can think of this as three columns, each being three wide. The first column here, which says RWX, is going to be the permissions for the, the user that owns the file. The second column is the permissions for the group that owns a file. And the third column is the permissions for anybody else. So not the owner of the file and not the group that owns a file, just anybody else in the file system. So we can see that this first field here for the owner of the file says RWX. This means that the owner of the file has read privilege, write privilege, and execute privilege. Now the same is for the group that owns a the file. They also have read, write, and execute. And the same is for anybody else. So anybody, including the owner, the group, and any other person, has read, write, and execute permission of this file. We can go ahead and look at file two here. We break this up into our three columns again. Again, the leftmost one is going to be the owner of the file. So the owner of this file can read and write to it, but now there's a dash here instead of an X. That means that the execute privilege is absent. The owner can only read and write to it, cannot execute the file. Now the next column is going to be for the group that owns the file. Now the group has permission to read, but does not have permission to write or to execute. The same goes for everybody else. They have permission to read, but not to write and not to execute. And we know this because there are dashes there instead of W's and X's. So the next thing we want to look at is how to change the permissions of a file. So there's a command called change mod or ch mod. And this can be used in two different modes. The first mode is symbolic mode. Now this can be the easiest to start out with and understand, but it can be less convenient to use as you become more familiar with the different permissions. So the way this works is you do chmod, and the next parameter that you specify is going to be u, g, or o. u standing for user, g standing for group, and o standing for other. So this is the set of users that you want to change permissions for. So for example, right now we want to change the permissions on file one for the user who owns it to be able to have execute privilege. So we're going to do u, and we want to add execute. So you're going to do plus x and then the name of the file that you want to change permissions of so we'll do file one now if we go ahead and do our ls dash l we can see that file one is now executable by the user who owns it in the leftmost field the same way we did that we can go ahead and delete the execute privilege for the owner we can do change mod u for user minus x of file one to remove that execute permission if we do our ls-l, we can go ahead and see that, that execute privilege has been removed. Now, on top of just adding permissions for user, group, or other, we can also change the permissions for everybody at the same time. So say we want to make file one writable by anybody. We can do change mod a for anybody plus w for add write permission to file one. Now, if we go ahead and do our ls-l, we can see that file one now has write permission in each of these three columns. 
We can also change permissions for directories the same way that we do for files. Now let's take a look at directory one here. We can see that there is no execute permission for the owner of the file, which is conda. So that means that if we try to CD into zero one, we get permission denied. We don't have execute privilege. So we can fix this by doing change mod u plus x to add execute permission for the owner of the file. And we'll do directory one. Now, if we try to CD into dir one, we can see that we can. All right, now I want to explain how octal mode works in change mod. So this can be a little confusing. So let's go ahead and open up a text file and explain it a little bit in here. Now imagine that each of those three columns for permissions that we saw earlier for user, group, and other, instead of being represented by letters, R, W, and X, were represented by numbers. Now what we do here is we have R, W, and X correspond to different numbers, and then we add them up per column and assign a number to the column assigning the permissions. Now that might sound a little confusing at first, but each of these permissions, R, W, and X, are tied to a specific number. So R is represented by four, W is represented by two, and X is represented by one. So if we have our user, group, and other field, what we can do is instead of using R, W, and X, we can use octal mode and use the numbers instead. Now, say you want to assign a read privilege to the owner of a file, all you would do is change mod four, zero, zero, and then the name of the file. So what this would do is it would assign read permission to the owner of the file and zero and zero for the group and other mean that nobody else in the group or anybody else has read permissions on that file or any permissions for that matter. Now say we want the owner of the file to be able to read and write to the file, we can do change mod six zero zero. Now you might be wondering where we got this six from. Well, if we want read and write permission, we can see that read is represented by a four and write is represented by a two. So we add those together to get read and write and we get the number six. So four plus two is six, read and write is six. Now we can see that execute is one. So in the same way, we could do change mod 777 seven, seven on a file. And what that means is user, group, and other are each seven, meaning that the user, group, and other each have read, write, and execute. 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7. All right, now let's take a look at octal mode in action. So if we do our ls-l, say we want to make file 2 here have read and write permission for the owner and the group and everybody else only to have read permission. So we can see the current permissions here. And what we would do is do change mod. And so we want the owner to have read and write. Read is four, write is two. So add those together, we get six for the owner. We want the same permissions for the group, so six again. And then we want everybody else just to have write permission. So R is four, so we're just gonna do four for other. And we'll do the file name, file two. So if we do our ls-l again, we can see that file two now has read and write for the owner read and write for the group, and only read for everybody else. So let's look at another example using octal mode. So we'll go ahead and look at our files here. Say we wanna change file three, instead of being loose and having read, write, execute for every single person, we wanna make it read, write, and execute for the owner, read for the group, and nothing for everybody else. So we can do change mod. And since we want read, write, and execute for the owner, read is four, write is two, and execute is one. Four plus two plus one is seven. So we put seven for the owner. For group, we want read, read is four. So we'll go ahead and put four for the group. And we want everybody else to have no permission. So we'll put zero and then file three. Now, if we do our ls-l, we can see that the owner has read, write, and execute. The group has read, no write, no execute, and everybody else has nothing. No read, no write, no execute. 
All right, now that we know how to change the permissions of a file, let's look at how we can change the ownership of a file. So if we look at the fields right here, we can see that this one on the left is the user that owns the file, and this one on the right is the group that owns the file. Now, say we want to change the user and group who own the file, file1, from conda conda to a user on this machine called test. We can do this with a command called chown for change ownership. Now, the first parameter is going to be the new owner of the file, so that is going to be the user test. And then you do a colon and followed by the new group that's going to own the file, which is also going to be test. And then we just do the file name. And we can see that we got an operation not permitted. That's because only the root user is able to change the ownership of a file. So if we just go ahead and do sudo chown test colon test file one. Now, if we do our ls dash l, we can see that file one, the owner is now test, and the group that owns it now is also test. All right, and that's going to be it for this video. Now you should be able to read and understand the different file permissions in Linux, as well as change those file permissions, as well as being able to change the user and group that own a file.